Well, hello. <laughs> Hi. Did you grow up in Boston? I did not. I grew up in the Twin Cities, St. Paul, Minnesota. No way. No way. I had this band, the Scrunchies, on from Minneapolis. I know them. I saw them when I was there last July. They're they're really good. Yeah. yeah and, That's and awesome. When did you, um, I mean, when did you come to Boston? Or why did you, actually, tell me about Minneapolis. Like, you grew up there and lived there how long? It was a nice place to grow up. I was there until I went to college in the Boston area, and then I just stayed there ever since. Nice. So uh, you went to high school there and everything? Yeah, I went to high school in uh, St. Paul. And yeah, that was basically, I started playing music as a kid, was first a classical musician, um, picked up the guitar around middle school time and started writing songs almost immediately. And it was my first sort of act of rebellion. I would say I was a pretty nerdy kid, science nerd, you know, I still am, but... Um, yeah, I had a really great math teacher named Mr. Leiter who encouraged us to be in bands, and uh, he actually put on a battle of the bands, and so I had two groups that were in that when I was in high school. We weren't really serious bands. We wrote original songs, but that was like our only performance, basically. When about was this when you were in high school there? How long ago? Uh, it was like the, let's see, I was class of 2008, so like right oh. around then. Do yeah. you remember, like, the? did you ever hear about the replacements and who's yeah. doing my all Yeah, my math teacher opened up for all those bands. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it was awesome, yeah. So he was in a local Minneapolis band? Yeah, I can't remember the name, but he was in that scene as well, just, you know, under the surface, I guess. Nice, nice. Do you remember when you first started listening to music and what you were listening to? Yeah, I was listening to grunge on the radio, early 90s. You know, I remember Nirvana and Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff like that coming on the radio. Um, I also listened to a lot of pop music um, when I was a kid. Um, my parents had, like, the, the Beatles. Mm. We had ABBA on heavy rotation. My sister really liked that one. She had a lot of movie soundtracks. She had mermaids, stuff like that. Um, I found the movie Velvet Goldmine when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's been like a huge sort of turning point in my life, I guess. <laughs> like I discovered all that music from there um, with my best friend in high school at the time. We were clarinet playing nerds who sat next to each other in orchestra, and we just found that movie. And uh, <laughs> the rest is kind of history from there. Yeah. Cool. I want to say Lori Barbero is the drummer of Babes in Toyland because yes. I fumbled what I was saying before. And, I, and she's been one of my best guests <laughs> I ever had, so I feel stupid that I didn't remember her name for a minute there. That's but really it cool. She was on this. Um, so you were into the grunge scene. I kind of hear a little bit of that when I listen to some of your music, maybe more with Power Slut than, than, than Linnea's Garden. Um, so the first band you had, was it a notable band that played? Did you play out at all there, or did you wait until you came to Boston to like start playing out? Yeah, I mean, I did my little, like, solo singer-songwriter thing. You know, I had those two bands in high school, Comb Saw and the Awkward Cactuses, that had one performance each at our high school battle of the bands. But I didn't really start, like, performing <laughs> out uh, until Power Slut, basically. The Awkward Cactuses. Yeah, it was it was cute. <laughs> a band called Minnesota called the Awkward Cactuses. That's a kind of a dichot <laughs> dichotomy, I would say, since, you know, the cat. there's no cactuses in, uh, you know, I guess they would be really awkward if <laughs> Well, we had a song about a cactus, so that was where the wow. band name came from. Did you yeah. ever go to, like, to the desert? I mean, yeah, did... my sister lived in the desert. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, now, you moved here. Did you move here to go to school? Yeah, I moved here to go to Wellesley College. Wellesley? Yeah. Oh, that's a good school. <laughs> So I know we're going to talk, I was going to ask you about this later, but did you, you went there for your uh, undergrad? Yeah. Was it, did you go to grad school here too? Yeah, I did. Which yeah. school did you go to grad school at? I went to Brandeis for grad school for neuroscience. Yeah. These are really good schools. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's why you came to Boston, right? Yeah. Did you, were you playing in bands or doing anything when you were in school? Not college, just my little, you know, coffee shop type singer songwriter thing. Like I wrote songs with my friends, like sort of as a joke. And this was kind of the precursor to power. So like some of the songs were really dirty. Like, <clears throat> oh my God, it was really embarrassing. Um, and then, you know, I wanted to join a band. So I went on Craigslist like the last semester of senior year and I found this band I wanted to join, but I wasn't good enough to play a guitar player in someone else's band. So I was the bass player. Do you remember the band? <laughs> yeah, Found Audio. Um, and JB, the leader of that band, was guitarist for Power Slow. We went on to form oh, nice. Power Slow together. Yeah. 
Okay, so according to my notes here, Power Sluts' first release came around 2013. I mean, when did the band form? Was it just before that? Yeah, the band formed in late 2012. Actually, do you remember when the end of the world was supposed to happen? December 2012. That was our first show. It was like a house party. It was the end of the you world You saved party. the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just needed Power Slut. <laughs> I mean, the, with the guy you were playing with, the guys you were playing with, were they all Boston guys? Yeah, pretty much. I'm trying to remember who was in that original lineup. I think we may have actually played as a three-piece, but yeah, it was uh, me, JB, and Ben Anderson, a local musician. And were you doing any writing in that band? Yeah, I did all the writing. You did all yeah, the writing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we wrote collaboratively, like, our parts, but, like, the basic songs, like, yeah, that was me. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at some of the titles of some of your songs. I know Breast of Power Slut was the, that was the first full length? <laughs> no, that was, like, our s- demo. That wasn't that was even, a like, a real recording. Yeah, <laughs> that was to get show, as we made that, and it was a home recording. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. With, power, with Great Power Comes Great that was Slut. The, that was the first uh, <laughs> real one, I would say. Yeah. Okay, there's a trend that's going to be happening here with these song titles that I've noticed <laughs> that I was doing. Oh, are like, we allowed to swear, by the way? You there's, can say there's fuck one, as much okay, as you Okay, great. Want. There's one that has a swear word. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> all right. It's all right. You can yeah. Like, I'm just looking. I, I mean, I noticed it didn't take very long, like a couple of years before you started recording with, like, you recorded with Benny Grotto. He's yeah. like one of the best engineers in town. How did that all come together for you? Yeah, it was good. Um, our friends, The Lights Out, had recorded with him. And then at the time, JB was in another project, Ruby Rose Fox, that also recorded with him. So I knew they sort of worked well together. So, yeah, we did a few recordings with Benny. Yeah, they all came out great. I mean, you have Go Fuck My Remix and Go Fuck Myself. I mean, uh, is that the same song that you did? I didn't listen to all these songs. I listened to some, but I didn't. Was that the same track that you just had to remix? Because it, Yeah, we basically opened it up. We gave fans the option of like taking the stems and remixing the songs and just release like a <laughs> remix album a little bit after that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites would have to be Everything is Closed on Christmas Except My Legs. That's our holiday single. Yeah, it was one of our last uh, things we released. Were but you like doing... Keeps giving. The gift that keeps on giving every year. Were you doing this all like in a t- with a you know, tongue-in-cheek type of thing? I mean, was that, was that your whole approach with Power Slut? Um, you know, at first it was kind of a joke, but then I actually got really into it because the band was like so good. It was almost like it couldn't be denied, you know, like I really got into it. It became a kind of lifestyle for a while, you know. So the the Boston crowd was receptive to you and you were getting a lot of gigs? Yeah, I mean, like the last couple of years at the end and when we played the Rock and Roll Rumble, I mean, I felt like we were really doing well. How'd you do in the Rumble? We got to the finals. You did? I think technically we got third. Yeah. <laughs> Who won that year? Set Fire won. Set, f- oh yeah, Corner Soul good. got second. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a good good year. It's a good year, yeah. Definitely. That was the last time they did it before this year. It was 2019. Where did they do that? TT the Bears? This year or oh, then? The, the year you were in the No, finals. TT the Bears had already closed by then. It, it did. was at once Somerville, which also now has closed, Oh yeah, JJ's place, yeah. Yeah, it was, I loved that room. I mean, that was also the final Power Slut show was there, and it was just a big day, you know. The the final Power Slut song. I wish it didn't end with so many dildos. <laughs> that was the last song, right? Oh, yeah. I guess it was. Uh, I, I don't know if I should ask what these songs are about or not. Herb's like, go ahead. Uh, Fun with Junk was actually your third full length out. So you put three? I consider that to be the final Power yeah. Slut recording, Fun with Junk. So yeah. so many dildos was on that track? No, it, that was a, sol- a solo thing I did, yeah. Because if you have junk, you don't really need dildos, right? Uh debatable <laughs> <laughs> that's true it is very debatable um so it seems to me that the band was moving along and then what did the pandemic kind of like halt you guys is that what happened actually no Slut? so i called the band off right before the pandemic um it was like it was just a lot of things were changing in my life like i finished my phd that was a big one um you know, meeting Cornersoul was a big one because it sort of made me realize I have to like up my game as a performer, as a front person, like as a guitar player, especially. Um, I just wanted to do a new thing. And, you know, that was sort of when Linnea's Garden, the first ideas came about. And there was a lot of songs that I thought were too serious for Power Slaughter. It wasn't the right vibe. And so I kind of had like a back catalog that was like 
over an album's worth of songs already. And so I started working on those. Um, I actually took a month off in January of 2020 after I finished my PhD. I was just completing all the writing. Um, Are we supposed to be calling you Dr. Herzog? No, that's whatever. No, it's, nobody I calls like me that, that except for like <laughs> two people at work. Okay, um, I'm not going to be the third one, but I kind of like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got everything together. We had our final Power Sled show. It was Leap Day 2020, and then... Two weeks later, like, COVID happened. The shit hit the fan. So, you know, we had our first Linnea's Garden Shows booked. It became live stream. I never really stopped, you know? Like, I just sort of, you know, pivoted my focus to, like, the live streams and, like, the home recordings. Um, I thought it was a good opportunity to get better at guitar, for sure. Yeah, I kind of got my timeline a little screwed up here because it looks like so many dildos. Every chance I get to repeat that song title, I will. <laughs> a song uh, I wish I'd never It seemed released. like that came out after you already had Linnea's Garden together. Yeah, it, w it was just a weird one-off thing. Like It's on your band camp. I That's why I got not, a lot of this. I try to not think about the song So Many Dildos. <laughs> okay, I'll try not to think about it either. <laughs> Uh, you have a lot of stuff on your Bandcamp page, so I, I had to like jot it all down here. So when you started Linnea's Garden after Power Slate, you'd already built a base pretty much in Boston. Was your what was your plan with it? Did you have a plan, or did you just want to be more accessible, or is there a reason why you went in a different direction? I just wanted to do something new. I mean, I just felt like. We Power Slit sort of did everything it could do and like the Rumble being one of my huge goals with that band and like, you know, we did pretty well in that and after that, I sort of, you know, wanted to go in a different direction musically a little bit. So it's, when you say the, the Rumble was one of your goals, were you getting a lot of airplay on, on Angel Wood's show, right? Is yeah, I mean, was, you right? kind of have to to be yeah. in the Rumble, yeah. Were your songs resonating with people around town? A lot of people will find Power Slate years later and be shocked that, like, I wrote Commuter Rail Me. That that was, like, a very popular song because it's a sexy ode to the MBTA, which I was just <laughs> trapped on for 15 minutes in Kendall. Um, I can't ride you on the red line. Yeah, we're in Cambridge today, yeah, man. Yeah. You, know, you can't avoid the red line around here, right? Yeah. <laughs> So when you started uh, Linnea's Garden, I want to try your clothes on. That was the first time I'd actually heard you because I wasn't living around here. And then I heard that song. I was like, this is pretty good. And um, you started, you know, things started rolling. But how did you keep it going during the pandemic? Because that's when you released a bunch of music. I mean, were you able to do anything at all? Yeah, or we did lots of stuff. Um, you know, uh, me and hands and tom from corner soul we were jamming like every single weekend in our studio in lowell and uh that's sort of how nowhere friday nights ep came about the other three songs had been sort of home recording projects where everyone recorded their tracks separately to a click and a little bit different of a vibe right but that's sort of what you had to do during the cases of like extreme lockdown um you know, we were rehearsing in my house, all masked up with the windows open. Like, was this in Lowell? No, in Somerville. I live in Somerville, but our studio was in Lowell. Right. It still is. Um, and yeah, just lots of jamming. And the EP sort of came out of those jam sessions like that summer of 2020. And then how did you get on Red on Red's radar? Um, we were part of the Whistle Stop Rock Festival with Power Slut. Like actually our last show was like the last Whistle Stop Rock show. Um, and so, you know, I knew Justine through that and yeah. I heard she was starting a thing. So, yeah. Uh, Nowhere Friday Nights came out in 2021. And then you, was that on Fashion? Uh, okay, Fashion Show was the first album, really. Yeah, that was the full, full length. Uh, Nowhere Friday Nights was an EP. Yeah. Right. That wasn't on Red on Red, though. You self released. Both were. They both were. Yeah. They both were. Cut and paste, no bra. You know what song I really like? Because I listened to the record a few times Which this week. One? Normal. I oh, love that track. That cool. would be my favorite. I like awesome. the chorus in that song. It's 
really good. Thank now, you. have you been able to go and play anywhere else besides Boston? Yeah, we've been going to New York like since summer of 2021, actually. And then we sort of expanded a little. Like we've been getting to Providence more frequently. We got to Philadelphia for the first time. That was really exciting. Um, and we're going to play New Haven in the fall. And, you know, the usual sort of <laughs> Providence, Boston, New York, like New Haven, Little John. But yeah, I'm always trying to expand it. It's just like... Do you book yeah. the shows yourself? Yeah, usually. Um, you know, people don't really hit you up from New York when you're a Boston band. But actually, no, one time Jarva did. You guys remember Jarva? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we know Jarva. Yeah, so I <laughs> played a show with Jarva, which was awesome. <laughs> oh, you played with her band yeah, down yeah, in Brooklyn? Yeah, we did, yeah. How did that go? It was great, yeah. I had a great time. Cool. Now, how was the reception in some of those other markets? It's been really cool. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work. I think there was a lot of reasons I couldn't go outside of Boston with Power Slut. Like, I was in grad school for one, often had to work seven days a week in the lab. Um, you know, I, I just didn't have the money or the time, basically. Um, now I have a little more of both. And it's like, you do have to, like, sacrifice like some of that in the beginning but then it's like the whole premise of like being able to win over a completely new room is like really exciting to me even if you know the attendance is not what we see in boston mm -hmm. i think it's worth the work and i really look forward to continuing to do that yeah i know you sent me your schedule and i know you have a lot of gigs coming up uh yeah, I, I looked at it. I was like, oh, God, did I book too much? I'm like, no, nah, I like to play. Like, it's cool. Like, I'll just do it. It's really fun, you know? You're doing this Porch Fest thing that's yeah. going on. Unfortunately, the show won't be out before then. But yeah, okay. have you played the Porch Fest before? Yeah, since 2013 with various projects. Wow. Yeah. Always the Somerville Porch Fest? Uh, I've played some other ones, but, you know, I've always lived in Somerville this time. So I try so to is host it on one. Your, is it on, oh, so it's on your porch. It's on my porch, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I love about the Boston area, that they do great shows like that. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of other dates here that you gave. A lot of them look like local shows, but I notice you are going back down to Brooklyn. Yeah, we're doing our single release there because um, the song is recorded with Carissa Johnson, and she has a giant radius clause because of a local festival she's playing at the end of the summer. So we're doing the show in Brooklyn. Have you known Carissa for a while? Yeah, yeah. So... When we were, like, really young, we played some random show, like Power Slut and Carissa's band, that she had booked. I see my friend Al over there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, hi, Al. Um, sorry, what People was I People peeking about? in our window um, in the studio. Yeah, so we were we played some random show. I think it was like 2013 at the Jewel Nightclub in Manchester, New Hampshire, with the Devil's Twins and some other bands. It was like a five band. Manchester, sale. New Hampshire. And Carissa had booked it, and I'm not even sure she was 21 yet, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so yeah, it was just like great fun, and I was like, oh, she's cool. And then we kept bumping into each other. I was like, yay. Um, yeah, yeah, she kind of earned a reputation as being a hustler at a very young age. She you works know? really hard. Um, I'm really lucky to have continued to be able to work with her more. Um, and I got to say, this song that we recorded is awesome. Like, I'm super excited about it. It's going to be Summer Jam. What's the name of the track? In the City. In the City. Yeah. It sounds like a jam. So there was a song by the jam called In the City. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's okay, though. That's People okay. can use the same titles. Oh, yeah, I see it right here. Uh, it's a fun, dancey summer jam about the thrill of staying out all night in a new place. That's what you told me. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, inspired by a true story. And, and that's coming Real on things that I saw. <laughs> June 30th. Yeah, you can pre-save nice. it now, though. I just got the pre-save link, so I'm excited. And um, you're finishing up a new EP... Uh, I think, oh yeah, you're recording Memorial Day weekend down at New Alliance. Is that with Ethan? Yeah, with Ethan. Nice. Now yeah. you worked with Ethan before, didn't you? Yeah, with Power Slut, the last album. And also we actually recorded one of the songs on the EP already with him. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, you like recording at New Alliance? Yeah, it's really awesome. Because I looked at your different studios and you've recording at, recorded in a lot of different places. Yeah, you know, I'm not really like you know, devoted to one particular. It's good to mix it up. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to talk to you about your guitar sound because I think it's okay. fantastic. How did you come up with your sound? What do you play through? And <laughs> did you have like, 
did you try different kind of amps? I mean, how did that all come together for you? Yeah, so when I was first starting off, um, I had never like played through pedals. I barely had even played electric guitar, to be honest. Um, Kathy Capozzi actually was super oh, yeah. helpful. She showed me like what the pedals do, like what order to put them in. Um, yeah, that was super helpful for me. And I ended up getting like a rat distortion pedal and a Music Man amp, which was the amp I played with Power Slut most of the time when I brought my own amp. Um, and then lately, I've upgraded a little bit. So I still use the same uh, glittery pedal board, right? That was like the signature in Power Slut, but the pedals on it are a little different. I use two delay pedals now, um, a fancier boss delay instead of what I was using before, which was just a carbon copy. I think there's just way more settings on the boss options. I use like a DD8. Um, the we're rat, getting geeky. We're getting yeah, geeky now. The rat it's good. is still like my signature distortion sound. Like mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with the rat. Um, but then there's actually this other tone to sort of boost it even more with solos. I actually saw a guy play with it at Sally O'Brien's. I asked him what it was. I took a picture. I just Do you remember I got who the it same was? pedal. I'm blanking out. You know, uh, Ghost Truckers, that guitarist. I, okay. I believe. I don't remember his name though. Uh, and then the other pedal I really like. It's called Elect. Electric gravy or electronic gravy or something gravy. Anyway, it's like a yellow <laughs> pedal and it has a chorus sound, but it also has a uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it? Like not phaser, vibrato? Yeah, it just, it sounds really like crazy. You and have wiggly. your own sound. You yeah. have your own sound and I like it. It's really cool. Um, what, when you've gone to, into studios with your pedals and everything, what have the, what's the reaction been from the engineers? Do they have any input for you? Do you like, this is how I'm doing it and uh, this is the way we're going to do it? Or do they have any input for you as far well, as the pedals go? I pretty much like, this is how I'm going to do it and then I do it. Yeah. Okay. And what about your band? Tell me about your band because you switch things around a little bit. Yeah. So uh, right now, basically I stole Corner Soul's rhythm section. So we got hands on bass and Ray Clough on the drums. Hands was on the drums before. He was before. on the drums, yeah, um, which was fun, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we're rocking it You now. like him better as a bass player? I mean, I think that's his main thing that yeah. he does. I mean, he's my partner. I like, full disclosure, I was like, oh, he learned the drums for me. Like, swoon. <laughs> like, I'm never getting rid of this guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely been really cool, though, like getting to work with him on both because... I feel like it's just like, I don't know, we just have this unique connection that's like hard to describe. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. If it works, you know. You know, I want to go back to the shows for a second because I didn't mm -hmm. actually say all the shows, so we, we should tell people about some of these. State Park. State Park in Kendall Square. They oh. started doing shows on Sundays and actually Kendall Square, they're huh? absorbing all the Charlie's Kitchen bookings. So they're doing Sunday and Monday nights. It's free and it's all ages. Is actually. Charlie's done? Yeah, Charles is done with oh, shows. Oh, wow. Did you um, used to play there a lot? Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, Harvard Square is not really a much of a live music area. <laughs> well, we got the Sinclair, at least. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, Kodo is in, in uh, Salem. I bet you you've played there before, We right? have played at yeah. Kodo. That's Great a cool sushi. place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the food. <laughs> I always immediately spend anything I made on sushi. That's the only problem with Kodo. <laughs> Faces is Malden? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of a newer room booked by Ryan, who used to book O'Brien. That's June 12th. Kodo's June 9th. June 9th Faces yeah. is June 12th. And then you're doing a Pride show, Parlor Pride show, 623. Where is that? In Rhode Island. It's a Parlor Providence. Yeah. Uh, Artist Jackie put that one on. That's going to be a fun night. And you're doing another Pride show on June 25th. Yeah, and Medford. Med Medford. Yeah, we did that one last did year. Did you say Medford? Uh, maybe. <laughs> you can tell you're not a local. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and you know, Freddie's in Brooklyn on June 30th. It's a pretty lot of, you got a lot of dates coming up. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's like, and play all the shows. The yeah. EP, are you going to hurry up and get that? I mean, now that you can do things, things have really changed in the last 10, 15 years with Bandcamp and everything. Are you happy with the fact that you don't have to go to labels all the time and you can do stuff and release it on your own? Is that a good, good way for you to do things? I really don't have any comparison with how it was before because all that was before my time. So, sure. 
<laughs> so you're going to release this on Bandcamp. Do you know? I mean, if you're finishing on Memorial Day, you're going to try and get it out right away in June? No, it's not till the fall. The so fall? The first odd okay. uh, single and music video already in sort of production coming out like in September. So, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's an accident. I think in your case it is. I've had a lot of doctors and people with master's degrees on my show. People like, in, like you know, Greg Turner was in the Angry Samoans, not exactly a smart band at all. They were known for their stupidity, and he has a PhD in mathematics. Oh, wow. You know, Kira Rossler from Black Flag went on and got a degree, and she ended up working at Yale University. And, you know, I have other people, too, that have, I've had a, a judge on my show who has a PhD in law. I mean... Yours is in neuroscience. I mean, that is remarkable. I mean, to, to think that you could be a scientist and also a, a rock and roller. I mean, how unusual do you think that is? Or do you, do you find it not unusual at all? Uh, it's kind of unusual to do it sort of, I think, at the intensity that I do music. Um, most of the cats I see in science who do music, they're in like a cover band or something, which is fine, but not my jam. So when you, I mean, did you always want to be a rock star or did you think, you know, I'm just going to have this as a side project while I become a doctor? You know, since I was like five, I can remember like having visions of like wanting to like front my own band. Uh, but I never took it like super seriously until like more recently, I would say. Yeah. Now I'm like, no, this is like really something I'm passionate about. I'm famous for bouncing all over the place. When you were young like that, who was there someone that you saw that you said, I want to play like that person? Maybe David Bowie. Bowie. Yeah, yeah you got a Bowie vibe going on. You're <laughs> glammy. <laughs> so did you like a lot of the 70s glam bands like Mott the Hoople and, and bands like, you know, and, and Spiders from Mars and all them? Did they influence you at a young age? Not at a young age. It was kind of like later, like as, you know, teenager, not like a super young age. But yeah, they definitely had a big influence. Do you listen to a lot of Bowie now? Yeah, I've actually been trying to listen to like all the albums in order. They just released more like early recordings, I guess, yeah. on Spotify. Sorry, I use Spotify. Um, but yeah, I, I put on like the Laughing Gnome and just like, it's just a fun song to be goofy to. We're all apologizing for Spotify. They're the host <laughs> of my show. So. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no I'm on, you know, my show's on Apple and all these other yeah, places too. Yeah. But it started off as Anchor, but now it's called Spotify for Podcasters. Okay. And it just happened. Yeah. And I don't know how it happened. But Companies get acquired. Welcome please, to corporate America. Yeah, please don't cut me off for, for saying anything. I'm not saying anything negative. And it's like, you know, this is something that's been on my mind lately. And it's something that I think you would be a good person to talk to about this. I was thinking about this this morning. I wanted to ask you about labeling. Um, for years and years, there would a band would come out with a female singer and it would be like female fronted rock band, female fronted alternative, all female band. How gender insensitive is this and how long do you think it's going to take all this labeling to stop and for us to get on this new path? When there's as many uh, bands with different genders than cis men and they're as good as the bands with cis men so you know I don't think we're quite there yet but at the same time I really get annoyed when people say like all oh, female because it's like just put a picture of yourself like are you assuming no one's gonna listen to the music like just play a recording of the music it's like I can tell like who cares also it's like who cares like Whatever. <laughs> I am guilty of this, and I'll admit it, I, because it was the way that I went through the, you know, I worked for labels in the 80s, you know, and I worked my way up, and it was always female-fronted alternative band, you know. Veruca Salt led by two chicks, you know. I mean, that's the way it was. That's the way people yeah. spoke. So what do we, I mean, do you think the younger, you're Gen Z? No, I'm millennial. You're a millennial. Yeah. So do you think, like, Gen Z is going to be the one to flip it or are the millennials flipping it already? I like the way people talk, I mean, about it. It's been it. happening for a while. Yeah, it's sort of we're in the process of it now, but it's not totally gone, I think. 
Yeah. So it's just, everyone's just going to be a band pretty much in the future. Is that yeah. It? And everyone's going to be really good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I could tell the way you reacted that that is something that troubles you. <laughs> yeah. It just, it kind of pisses me off because I know, yeah, I could totally be getting more exposure, airplay, like access to certain things if I really pump up, you know, queer, female, front it, whatever. But like, I don't want to like... Like, I don't want to hide it, but it's like, I don't want that to be like the reason why people like my music. I want them to identify with it in different ways. If that's one of the ways, great. But like, I don't want that to be my only audience. I feel like that's limiting your audience a lot. Right. How do you identify yourself? Queer female fronted band. <laughs> queer female fronted. So queer female fronted band is okay? I don't, I mean, that's how I identify I wouldn't say that's my, you know, write that the first sentence in a band bio. There's no way to really educate people to change overnight, is there? You just have to be really good while being whatever you are. <laughs> Unless it's a cis man. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to be bad. I'm just kidding. Um, don't oh, do that. Oh, I can take it. I can take it. I guess I'm a cis like, man. They don't really have to try to do that, though. That's the funny part. Um. <laughs> well, I, did, I, I thought you would be a good person because you're younger to ask about this, you know, because it seems like there's a big change going on right now in the world. I'm all for it, by the way. I grew, you know, I, I worked in, a, in, a, in an industry, the music industry, my whole life where there's a lot. There were a lot of problems. Yeah, <laughs> the the sure. way everything was referred to, it, it was a problem. And I think the labeling was one of the bigger problems. I think um, we've also swung in like the opposite direction where people, uh, you know, it was very sexy back in the day. And now it's like, it's almost like people have become more conservative. Yeah, I'm not too happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know the world changed in 2016, unfortunately. Our world changed, you know. Hopefully we can flip this thing and keep it changing in the right direction. Um, talk to me about the Boston music scene because you're really fully engulfed in it. Is there a lot of good music happening right now? Do you feel like things are going to be much better now that we've gotten through the pandemic? I think there's been a huge changeover as to who is playing out. You see older bands that I was a fan of, you know, when I was in my early 20s, they sort of have focused on other things. Like they still play out, but not as frequently. Um, and then at the same time, you have a new crop of bands coming up. You've got some very young cats coming up, right? They have never partied because of COVID. They were in college and they never got to party. And now they get to be in bands. They're doing the house party thing. Awesome. Some of them are starting to play at places like the jungle. I see them, you know? Um, and then we've got the the older cats, right? A lot of them are doing new stuff and it's really exciting too. When you say the older cats, give me some example. You play with, did you play a show with the Nervous yeah, Eaters? Yeah, I was going to yeah. name Nervous Eaters first, but yeah, I just, you know, I just love their new material. Like I can't go on enough about how much I love those guys. So Really? Well, yeah. give, tell me about some other bands you think are cool in Boston, old or young. I really like Girl with a Hawk. Uh, oh, yeah. Fronted by my friend Linda. Linda. Yeah. yeah, I think they're just great. You know, they're a newer band, but, you know, veterans of the scene. I really like them. Yeah. And um, you guys, you guys, I think I saw some footage of you on stage with them. Recently. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we do that. Yeah. <laughs> You've um, collaborated with several people around yeah. town. Yeah, I was also going to say Crow Follow yeah. is really good, too. They're playing our Porch Fest. So you're mentioning older bands now. What about some of the younger bands coming up? Carissa moved away, right? She's I wouldn't consider York. her a younger band. I'm talking about like even younger than her. Even younger. Um, there's a great new band called Andro Queen that we'll be playing with at State Park on the 21st. Um, Andro Queen? Andro Queen, like androgynous really? queen. Really? Yeah, they're really good. Um who else have I seen recently? Um, Skylar Simone is really good. Yeah. So you would say the scene's rather vibrant these days. Yeah, I think it's kind of like, I'm, I've kind of aged out of the house shows, so I'm sort of waiting for them to sort of break forward and, you know, actually start playing out, actually be interested in playing other venues. Um, you know, I'm sort of on the lookout for bands like that all the time. You I'm mentioned the jungle. To, yeah, I'm always trying to find bands in the jungle because Hans you, actually works there. So, okay. you know, it's easy for me to drop by and check player. out a show. Yeah. Is he a booking agent there? 
No, he's the manager. Yeah. Oh, he manages the place. Yeah. So tell us about that place. I've never been there. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I live right near it. It's uh, Union Square, Somerville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a nice little 80 capacity room. It's about the size of O'Brien's. They've got food. Um, yeah, there's a nice stage that's pretty high up. And yeah, Hans has done a lot to improve the sound quality because they are a pretty new venue. Like they formed in... 2019 i want to say and then they got wiped out for a few months yeah <laughs> well like yeah. more like a year <laughs> yeah but actually Linnea's garden's first show was at the juggle and it was sold out and i think we sold out the juggle either every time or almost every other time we've played it that's so, impressive yeah great room is it a, is it mostly local boston bands or do any touring bands play there? there's actually some really great touring bands that have come through that i've seen them just before they've like broken out and gotten more famous um there's a vermont band called dust love that's gotten really big but i saw them on a random tuesday at the jungle it's like who knew um new right. york band called mary shelley they're about to do like european tour like yeah a lot of really good bands will come through in fact I would recommend that if there's touring bands that come through the jungle, that would probably be the best show to see rather than a local bill. You know, back in the older days, not old, old days, but it's been going on for a while. A lot of bands would like swap shows, you know, like yeah. you book them up here. Yeah. Are you doing that with any we bands We are. Now? I'm in the process of it. Yeah, there's a really cool band I want to invite up called Friendly Company that we played with in Brooklyn that was on the show with Jarva. Yeah, yeah I didn't know them. Jarva booked them, and I just really love their music, and they really loved our music. So, yeah, we're doing a swap. There's another band called Golder that we've done a show swap with. Golder. Um, are they yeah. from New York They're also? from New York. They're super young. They're super talented. Yeah. So what's your what's your, what are you thinking about for the future? What are your goals here? I know you got this new record coming out in the fall. I mean, what is your plan? I mean, would you like to do a real tour and go cross country, or do you, are you going to just keep it local? Or um, I haven't really figured that out yet. That's sort of what I'm working out for the do next you want few to, weeks. Do, do you want to go on tour? Yeah, that's been a big goal. Um, right now we do, you know, so the Northeastern stuff, but I hope to expand it in the future. Nice. Do you have a van? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I guess you might need one. Well, you could do a station wagon. Well, three piece if you can yeah, jam everything piece. in. We the actually trunk. can fit everything into uh, Hans's Kia Soul, believe it or not. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Well, hey, um, thanks a lot for coming down here. And, you know, once again, you got a lot of good dates coming. I'll go ahead here, State Park. And you said that's Kendall Square on May 21st. Cotto in Salem, June 9th. Faces in Malden, the 12th of June. Parlor Pride Show, that's in Rhode Providence. Island, yeah. Providence, Rhode Island, 23rd. Medford Pride Festival on 625. And then Freddy's in Brooklyn on 630th to celebrate the release of In the City featuring Carissa Johnson. And I, I love the the description you gave me. A fun, dancey summer jam about the thrill of staying out all night in a new place. And it's from personal experience, you said. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, thanks a lot for coming down. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. All right, take care.